Oh, he's a good one. He's a good one. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, dude. Wow, BJ, thank you, man. This is fun on the right? Look at just the blockhead on that fish. It's crazy. Something you didn't see a lot of 10 years ago was guys fishing with spinning rods for tog. Since I've started doing it, it is my favorite way to target them. It is so much fun catching these hard fighting fish on spinning tackle. One of the reasons spinning rods have become so popular for targeting tog has been the use of tog jigs. Now tog jigs work on conventional tackle as well, but they are best with spinning tackle. The reason for that is the ideal tog jig is less than two ounces in weight. So with jigs two ounces or less on conventional gear that might sink a little bit too slowly to effectively fish a lot of the deeper tog spots, especially the places where the biggest tog hang out. So you go with a spinning rod, you can use thin diameter line, it's gonna to sink to the bottom quickly even if it's just a one ounce jig, half ounce, three quarter ounces, whatever you need to fish that spot and the tog are way more likely to bite and hang on to those smaller, those lighter jigs. A lot of anglers, including myself, like a particular feel to the rod and reel setup when they're fishing for tog with spinning tackle. The rod I like to cast a false albacore with is not my favorite rod for fishing for tog. The reason is it has completely different applications. For casting the false albacore, I like a longer rod that's gonna throw the lure a long way and has a lot of action to give to either the soft plastic or the metal I'm skipping across the surface. For tog, I'm not worried about imparting any action. I want a rod that's gonna have a lot of power through it. I'm also not gonna be casting it. At most, I'll be flipping it away from the boat a little bit. So that's less important as well. I like a shorter rod, something in the six and a half, seven foot range, and a rod that's gonna have a little bit of a more moderate action and it's gonna have a lot of backbone right through here. A rod that's gonna be a little bit forgiving to high sticking, which is almost inevitable when you're fishing for tog. After you set the hook on the tog, assuming you didn't miss it. Oh man, how did I miss that fish? You wanna keep the rod a little bit high while you make some cranks to get the tog away from the danger zone down there in the structure. This leads to some inevitable high sticking, so a rod that's gonna be able to take that without possibly breaking is gonna be the one you wanna go with. So the rod I'm using on this trip with Captain BJ Sylvia is a Daiwa Harrier, and that's a jigging rod. So it's designed for jigging anything from bluefish, striped bass, bluefin tuna, and in this case, blackfish. Jigging rods tend to have a lot of lifting power, which is extremely important when tog fishing. Having a rod that's able to absorb those tail beats and head shakes of a tog as it's trying to make its way back to the wreck is essential especially because you're gonna be fishing with a nearly locked down drag in most cases, especially around the gnarliest structure. That jigging rod allows you to put a lot of heat on the blackfish without worrying about the rod blowing up in your hands. Your typical inshore action rod designed for casting lures to fish like striped bass or false albacore isn't gonna have as much power when it comes to that straight up and down fighting style you're gonna get with a big blackfish. <laughs> so with the reel, you're also gonna want something that's incredibly durable and can take some abuse. On that trip, and this one right here, is the Daiwa Saltist MQ. MQ with Daiwa stands for monocoque, and that's a particular body design that allows them to put a larger gear into the real body itself. Larger gear equals more cranking power, which is essential in those first few crucial seconds of the fight when you're hooked up to a big tog. You need to get a couple turns on the reel handle. Store some line on that reel so you're holding that tog up away from the structure. If you give too much of that fish, you give them a chance to get down there into the nasty stuff, that's when you get chafed off, that's when the fish gets rocked up. That's how you go home with a fish story instead of pictures of your new personal best blackfish. Now all this talk about tog being so powerful, even with that, I'm using, I'm scaling down to 30 pound test or in some cases 20 pound test braided line. The reason for that is oh, I want man. a very thin diameter braid that allows me to use a lighter jig, the lightest jig possible. That's gonna give the best presentation. If I can get away with a half ounce jig, I'm using that. Most cases it's gonna be a three quarter to maybe one and a half ounce jig and that jig's gonna sit on the bottom like this and the lighter the jig, the less the tongue's gonna notice it. It's just gonna think it's part of the crab when it comes over, grabs it, picks it up, swims away with it, which gives you a better chance of getting a good hook set on that fish. The thinner diameter braid has less water resistance, which means when you're anchored up or spot locked over the structure, that current is not going to push your jig around quite as much if you're using, as if you were using 40 or 50 pound test braid. I do use fluorocarbon when it comes to tog fishing, 
but I'm not using it necessarily for its lack of visibility underwater. I like it for its added abrasion resistance. Fluoro is always going to be more abrasion resistant than monofilament, so I'm going to use six to eight feet of 40 pound test fluorocarbon in some cases. You talk to captains like Captain Rob Taylor, he may bump up to even 60 pound test fluorocarbon leader, but that's attached to a 20 pound test braided mainline. But what that tog is seeing and the part that's most likely to encounter the wreck is going to be that leader, so you want that to be pretty heavy duty. But beyond the spinning rod just being a very fun way to target tog, I mean, you get a very up close and personal fight when you're battling a big keeper blackfish on this. It is, I also think in some cases, it's more effective. This hasn't completely replaced conventional rods in my tog fishing arsenal. If I'm fishing deeper water where I need heavy weights or I'm fishing with rigs, I'm going with my tried and true conventional outfits for tog. But for shallower water or where they want maybe a more finesse presentation, I'm gonna fish that jig and I wanna fish it on a spinning rod. It's made me a more effective tog fisherman. I've been having more fun doing it and uh, definitely putting more fillets in the box. I still have not cracked that 10 pound mark for blackfish, but I've caught them up to eight pounds on spinning gear. I know guys who have caught them twice that size. It is an absolute blast. Any fish from just keeper size on up gives you a real battle on this. And uh, still plenty of weeks in the tog fishing season. I can't wait to get back out there and try to get that 10 finally. We've put out a lot of great tog fishing videos over the last couple years, covering as far as Cape May, New Jersey, on up to Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts, fishing with some of the top tog fishing captains in the Northeast. You can check them out by subscribing to our YouTube channel. We'll toss some links in the description below. Enjoy them. Make sure you visit onthewater.com, and uh, thank you for watching. Good luck with the rest of your tog season.